Uh, Richard, thank you, uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, you came. You, you will win the prize for having come the furthest distance of any of any person appearing at Brainstorm Tech. So thank you. Uh, you're welcome. First, I want to make something very clear. By the way, Adam, can you speak Mandarin? Uh, no, not, not a word. Other, other, very I, I good. can say yes, but not no. <laughs> <laughs> very good. My English is worse than Adam's Mandarin. No, no, no. Oh, good luck to I will it, try my best. It, 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 thank you for that. If that were true, we would have a very uninteresting conversation to have. Uh, <laughs> it will <so> be. <laughs> I appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate your coming here and, and, speak, and speaking our language. It's, 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 really, it's really an honor. Most of you in the room will not know JD.com because very, very few, if any of you, will be customers. So I just wanted to share a few stats for you to get your heads around. Imagine if you were running a business with 300 million act, uh, annual active customers. 300 million. That's larger than you know, the United States. 515 warehouses. 2017 revenues of $56 billion US, that's 43% year over year growth, and a market capitalization of $56 billion. That is, that is JD.com. And Richard, you started the business as an online uh, site for selling computers and, 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 and electronics. Tell everybody the major milestones from that small website to what JD is today. Uh, I think uh, I'm not interested in about so many data. Uh, only one thing is very important to me, that is our customer experience. Uh, so on the first day, we want to make sure three factors is, are very important to uh, the retail business. First is customer experience, and then the cost, and then the e efficiency. So we began to build our whole system to reduce uh, the retail cost and improve our retail uh, business efficiency. And also our customer experience. Today, uh, as you said, we have uh, a huge warehouse network which can cover the whole, almost the whole country. Yeah. And that's a big country, by the way. Yeah, very big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we spent uh, you know, over 10 years uh, to achieve that. So the key, I think, uh, factor to us is customer experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the, uh, your, your big competitor is Alibaba. Um, it's, a, it's a larger company by market capitalization, and more people will be familiar with Alibaba than JD. What are the major differences, and what, 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 are, what do you think your advantage is over your competitor? Uh, first, I think uh, we have different uh, business model. For GD, we have uh, a, like a combination platform, which means we have direct sales business model. We also have our platform, uh, marketplace business model. Uh, second is uh, we are very focused on our customer experience. As I said, we only offer our customers the authentic products. and. Uh, the best fast delivery service. So make us very different to any competitor in China. I think uh, you might, most of the people today here uh, know Alibaba, but if you try shopping in China, you will never forget us. <laughs> um, and, and Talk about the, uh, the, the physical aspect of your business. You have, you have these warehouses, you operate logistics, you are, you are doing drones. Um, how do you think about this? Why do you do all those things is my question. Okay, we spent uh, 14 years. Uh, if you look at our financial report, you will find our general cost on, for retail business our general cost uh, on revenue is about 10%. And uh, we managed over 3 million SKUs by the end of last year in our stock. But our inventory days is uh, between 30 to 40 days. Um, so, I mean, our system was very efficient already. Mm. But for the future, how we can offer our customers better customer experience? and how to continue reducing our costs and uh, improving our efficiency. 
So the only way to achieve that is that technology. So we spend a lot of time and a, a lot of money to develop our both like a fully automated warehouse, uh, self-driving trucks, and uh, people-free delivery stations, and uh, drones, and uh, last mile delivery robots. Yeah. We just want to make sure our customer is the, always the best, not only today, but for the future. And in, in my reporting on, my recent reporting on China, I have tried very hard not to make comparisons to American companies because that's really only interesting, I think, to Americans. It's not that interesting in China. But you share these characteristics with Amazon in that you, you, own, you take, you take uh, uh, ownership of the product and then sell it. But you also operate an eBay-like business where you have a marketplace and you're investing in, 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 aggressively in technology the way both companies do. Do you find that you look to these companies outside of China for ideas, or do you mostly look inward in China for your, in your own company for your ideas? Well, on the beginning, uh, to be honest, I knew nothing about uh, e-commerce, and uh, I knew nothing, even know nothing about uh, the internet. I, I didn't know Amazon when I began my e-commerce business, because I was forced to do uh, online business because of SaaS in Beijing. So, but one thing we know is very important. In China, China is very special. The market is special, consumer is special, everything is special. So, uh, which we have to use, we have to build a system to more satisfy Chinese consumers. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, the Chinese consumers is the most uh, challenging thing, I think. I mean, like in China today, if you buy anything from my company, which is over about $10, something like that, the delivery fee is free. Mm. And you must deliver to, to them within 24 hours. So not like in the US, you, you have to spend over one, like $100 to buy the Amazon Prime. And then you can get the two days fast delivery service but I can tell you, if in China, <laughs> we offer our customers two days deliver, no, it's not a fast. It's a disaster. I think, I, I think you've made it very easy for people to understand how intense the competition is, is in China. I want to talk about your partners. You have, JD has very interesting partners. Uh, Tencent owns 18% of your company. Walmart owns 12% of your company. And you just bought on, brought on another major investor, Google, which owns 1% of your company. I want to start with Tencent. How important is, is Tencent's WeChat service, which has a different name in China? Remind me the name in Chinese. Weixin. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. How important is that to JD's business? Well, first of all, I think uh, all those partners, we have the same uh, core values of business. Mm. It's very important. If you, know, if you cooperate with any partners or company, have different uh, core values, it also will be a disaster. First, uh, for WeChat, in China we call it WeChat, it's very important to us because until today, WeChat can bring almost one-fourth of the new customers to us for every day. Also, uh, we are developing a lot of very interesting just want to combine the social and the e-commerce together. We call it like, uh, I don't know, shopping circles. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a lot of very interesting things. And it's, it's so interesting here because we don't have that in, in the United States. It's you, have, you have Facebook, you, Instagram a lot. Yep, but not, not nearly the level of commerce is happening on those platforms as is happening on WeChat with JD in China, true? I think if you come here, Maybe everything will change. What are your, what are JD's interests in doing business in the United States, first of all? I should say outside of China, specifically, what is your interest in the United States? I'm very interested in the United States, our, we call it boundary list uh, retail. Uh, if you look at the US today, you will find the online business, the online business, the offline business, the offline business, they are very clear. 
they have a very deep uh, gap between the two kinds of business. But in China today, uh, we have combined them together. So we call it uh, um, boundary release retail. It means- I, I, I told Richard when we first met that I was afraid to say boundary, league, boundary lists. So congratulations, you've done it twice now. Please, I, I interrupted you, go ahead. <laughs> For Mandarin, it's very easy for Chinese to, to say Wu Jie Ling Shou. Okay. If I knew how complicated in English, I would change it to another name. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, yes. today, I don't think my company is an e-commerce company or, or, or offline chain, uh, like a chain stores company. You cannot tell that. It's, uh, but for US, I think uh, here, uh, will be a lot of opportunities to combine the two kinds of business together. Okay, so I understand that there's an opportunity to do some of the things in the US that Chinese retailers are doing online and offline, but where does JD fit in? Fit in. Okay, all right. Um, we, you know, our advantage is our supply chain. Yes. Ability, because we have a huge uh, logistic network in China, so uh, I can describe that for you. We call um, anytime and anywhere. If you look up or look down, you will find a GD. It means if you stand in, on any street or any city in China, you will find uh, some like a GD convenience store or GD home. Uh, or some, our Salmon Fresh supermarket. And uh, even if you find on the gate of the shop, no GD name, actually like a restaurant in the alcohol, the wine in that restaurant, and the fresh food come from GD. Mm -hmm. Even like a, a haircut small shop, the shampoo come from GD. Mm -hmm. so, and if you look down, you will find GD because you know, any app, including like a Total or DD, which is like, similar like a Uber in China. If you buy anything in the future, you needn't download a, a very special e-commerce app in your mobile phone. You can buy from like DD or Total or any app you like. You needn't leave them. And uh, just one click, you can buy it. And the, behind it, the supply chain comes from JD. So, yeah, that's our... And do you, do you anticipate that you'll sell technology directly in the U.S., or do you anticipate partnering with Walmart and Google and others to sell technology here? Uh, I think we will begin the second part. Okay. And then first part. And my, my last question along those lines is, when? When will you come? You recently said... You had hoped to come to the U.S. in 2018, but now you've delayed that. When, when will you come? We have a team, already team here, but uh, you know, uh, anyway, this market is uh, very new to us. It's definitely different from China. We must to be very careful. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure every step we go forward is a right step. You know? We don't want to start back. So, uh, still need some time. Um, we, talk, uh, we talked about your competitor, Alibaba. I want to ask you briefly about two other competitors. The first is, how is Amazon doing in China? Unfortunately, it's not good, I think. <laughs> well, that's fortunate for you, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I, the market is so huge. Yeah, it doesn't mean only one player. Yep. You know, it can, could be several players. So uh, anyway, when I began my business, Amazon has bought a local e-commerce company called uh, Joyo, uh, which has been exist in China market for seven years. Uh, we begin, you know, from zero. We I only got twelve thousand, which two thousand dollars, to begin my business. So uh, I think we can do something more quicker. Interesting. And there's a, a younger company called Pinduoduo. Did I say that okay? Yes. What, very, very good. And they thank you. And, uh, 
and they are focused on smaller Chinese cities. Are, are, do you view them as a competitor? Whatever the retail industry change today or future, three things never changed. Yeah. For consumers, they only focus on the quality, the price, and the service. So I don't care about, the, to be honest, the different business model. I only care about the customer experience. If you shop in China for several times, maybe only three times, you will get the answer. The, the, a very diplomatic answer. And uh, given that, I'll ask you one last question that requires diplomacy. Uh, what, is, what do you anticipate will be the impact of higher tariffs between China and the US on your business? Tariffs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a universal language response, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For my company, I can tell you, it's okay. Why? Because we are we focus on our uh, consumer. Like uh, last year, we contracted with an American company for two point three billion US dollars for the beef and uh, you know, um, anyways meat. But if something happen between the two countries. Yeah. We cannot get from US, we yeah. can get it from Europe, yeah. Eastern Europe, and, uh, or any country. So um, apparel, electronics, or anything we cannot import from US, we can import from Europe, mm. or South Asia, or Japan, or Korea. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to uh, my company. But I hate war, anyway. Mm -hmm. The war is always the bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even even never never, ben never benefit any side. I think I, I understand completely. So, if if I uh, what, what you're saying is is that rather than pass on higher prices to your customers for U.S. goods, you'll find now you'll you will find goods from outside the United States to sell them. Uh, no, I don't think. So. I mean, we will let our customer to choose. Yep. If they are very satisfied with the American price. Yep. Yeah, we will continue to offer them. But if you think uh, American brands or American goods, the price is too high, we can find, you know, some, uh, any other choice. Yeah. I understand. Uh, your questions, please, for, for Richard Liu. Uh, yep, there's one right in the back. Please identify yourself. Uh, I'm John Needham with Fortune. Uh, Richard, I, I wanted to ask you about Super Brand Day and how that's different from uh, Singles Day? Uh, singles Day is folks for you know every band, everybody want to attend this party, they can come. And uh, but for Super Band Day, it's only folks one single band. So on that day, we will make sure that band will at least I think uh, over 500 million of Chinese will see that event. So it's different. And I can tell you, it, which is very interesting, any band after Super Band Day, the sales value will increase at least 30% versus before. Interesting. Thank you. Over here. I, I can't see you, but I know there's a question out there. Richard, a couple of questions. I'm sorry. Ash please tell us who you are. Sure. Ashamara with Baron Capital. Uh, Richard, first, I would love to get your thoughts um, just on logistics. You guys have been doing a lot on drones. What are you doing that's differentiated uh, Dif relative uh, to your uh, competition? Uh, different from the competition. Okay. How on are logistics drones? and drones specifically. And then second is uh, there's um, speculation that there will be cross listings happening in China of uh, ADRs that trade here, like your company. I would want to get your thoughts on what you think the impact will be from that over time. Let, let, let's start on drones and logistics, and then okay. we'll ask for help on ADRs and cross listings. OK. First, uh, GD, we began to invest on drone technology very earlier. Uh, it's almost several years ago. Today, actually, it's over 500 drones uh, can fly every day. 
in different uh, seven provinces. Uh, the total flying hour is over 100,000 hours already. Mm. Of, of your, your company's drones alone? Yes. And uh, four types of drones are very uh, mutual already, from 5 kilograms uh, until 50 kilograms. And uh, on June 18th this year, this is our, my company's birthday. Uh, our first heavy drone has uh, you know, come from the factory which can fly about 1,000 kilometers and can carry almost between one ton to, to five tons. So we have different uh, level of drones. And uh, I think uh, we are a little bit earlier and all ahead of it with any competitors in the globally. Let me interpret your question. The JD is traded in the United States, but you want to know what the future is for Chinese companies trading in the United States and China, is that correct? You mean CDR? Yes. OK. Uh, I think uh, you know the thing is changing every second, every day. <laughs> so uh, when China began the CDR program, today the situation is different, definitely different. So I think it will be more, uh, it will be late than original program, project. It will take longer than people think, think, so. think it will take for the CDRs to be dominant in, in, in China? Is, is, yeah. is that what you're saying? Yes. But, but the, the interpretation of that is that Chinese companies will, rather than do CDRs and rather than list in the United States, they'll list in Hong Kong. Is that what you anticipate or no? Today, most of the China internet companies still choose to go, uh, come to the US or go to Hong Kong. Uh, not in mainland China, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but you anticipate that changing, or but you, you anticipate it changing slowly is what you're saying? Sooner or later, it will change, but at least uh, within maybe one year or two years, cannot change too much. Very good. Um, I just wanted to say that it was, to, to me, it's been so special to have you here uh, to have such an important Chinese company represented at, at Brainstorm Tech. So on behalf of the audience and all of Fortune, I want to say xie xie ni to you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.